before the fun begins. Hello, welcome to the council. We begin tonight's meeting of the council by calling the council to order. Hello to everyone and thanks for joining us. The council's a live Twitch talk show and podcast discussing Star Wars The Old Republic. I'm Elise and with me are my fellow council members, Sakari. Oh look, you got to go first. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's very rare, but yeah, here I am. Hey everyone, good to have you here. Hi, I wanna really milk this for all it's worth. <laughs> and Redna. Hi. I'm going to juice this for all it's worth. <laughs> really? We still got the milk and the juice. Uh, somebody needs to bring the bread, I guess. We got a full meal. <laughs> and I mean, there's case, a Reddit actually. Uh, for, uh, not okay, hold my us. juice. <laughs> Instead of hold my beer, it's for little kids. <laughs> really? Okay, hold my juice. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it shows cute. these kids doing the crazy things. <laughs> funny so no magic ace tonight she's having technical difficulties. right and there's also a good chance we won't have a lease if you did if your internet just dis disappeared because it's storming where you are right now right so if you disappear yeah, on us i mean we're in the same like right yes. we're kind of i'm kind of sharing the same weather as as magic so uh -huh. weather cord. <clears throat> so if uh if redna and i end up stalling half the show we trust that our, our viewers will have pity on us <laughs> and maybe help us along. We, who knows? We'll see. We'll see what we can do. Oh, goodness. Uh, Elise, what are we doing tonight? What is our topic? We're going to be talking about faction identities and how they've changed over time in Star Wars The Republic. Okay. Yes. We need to define that here in a moment to talk about what oh, that means. Well, you mean like the fact that there are no factions any longer in the game? Maybe. Maybe that's exactly what we'll talk about. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Redno, would you like to fill in on Magic Ace's uh, usual spot here, the uh, the show maintenance? Well, sure. I will <laughs> let all of our viewers and listeners know that after the live broadcast, you can find our recorded episodes everywhere podcasts and videos are found and on our YouTube channel. Check out our social media and don't forget to follow us on Twitch. You can find our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Council Swotor, our Twitter at the Council Swotor, and our website at www. you guessed it, the Council .com. You can also find our <laughs> Patreon page at patreon.com slash the Council Swotor. Wow, there was no, but wait, there's more <laughs> like infomercial version. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, one more <laughs> thing would be do you have an icebreaker for us this week? I do actually have an icebreaker for us this week yes um <laughs> i'm trying to make sure i time the uh, the graphics here at the right time as god well. you two are cheesing it up I'm just gonna sit back and, like, listen. well it's easier to cheese it up when you just you're sitting there giggling the whole time <laughs> yeah you just gig you just giggle and we'll just stall the whole show and hopefully we can get through the hour does that sound good we'll see. <laughs> see if we can make it yeah that, that way we can fill an extra 15 minutes since we're missing magic aces input no kidding, especially on this topic. This is like this is no good having her not here at this time. But anyway, we'll see what she what we can get out of it. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about the icebreaker. Um, just a, a simple question that we ask, just to kind of get the discussion going every time. Uh, the question of the night is: Name something you are hoping to see in the story for Swotor six point oh. It can be anything, anything you want to see. In, what are you hoping for in the story? Or Swotor 6.0. Uh, feel free, uh, chat, if you would like to chime in on this. Let us know what you think. We're happy to uh, have your input on this as well. Uh, that said, Redna, do you have anything at all? Uh, I would say... I mean, there's a lot of things that I'm hoping to see. Um, well, first and foremost, I hope to high hell that I am no longer being forced to be possessed by some obscene megamaniacal... You know, genocidal, homicidal, whatever the freak is, uh, for whatever reason, and uh, that I can actually choose to partake or not partake if I am. Beyond that, I would actually like to see that you know my character is actually different than the other ones in the galaxy. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure how they would do that. I guess realistically, if they're going to actually have a story that acknowledges that I'm not a force wielder, uh, then they <laughs> right? <would> actually, <laughs> need to. That's actually um, a good one. They would. They need to lay some sort of groundwork that explains what happened to all of us. That you know, because that's 
the biggest problem I had with Coffee was that at the beginning of Coffee, the entire premise was literally every other hero in the galaxy has been wiped out. So for all intents and purposes, there should be no storytelling that leads into operations groups or anything like that because you're the guy. Yeah, And then you had to go and gather up. You didn't even have your companions, right? Let alone the fact that there are Inquisitors and whatever else in the galaxy that might have some sort of say in, in galactic matters. Right. So I'd like to... It, I think maybe if I were to go really simple and possible is that it would be nice to see that they... If they don't actually retcon an answer, they at least do restore some identity into all of our characters. You know, that the choices that we've made from zero to wherever we're at still, okay. you know, down to the fact that I prefer to dual wield blasters, not wield a lightsaber. Like, I'd like to see some acknowledgement of um, the the core original principles. Um, yeah. They did a good job with leading up to pre coffee with making Suresh look pretty, uh, you know, um, in, intrinsically motivated for her own agenda mm. and and you know making the darker side of the republic reveal itself i never felt like they ever did anything to show any kind of light or redeeming possible side to the to the empire or let alone the sith but i maybe i'd like to see obviously i want to see a restoration of the original factions but maybe i'd like to see more development on the the higher level like that or like okay maybe now we see that Suresh has been uh or you know dethroned and and she's going to uh her her demise okay, or, wait a or minute. Removal leads i have a question but... have you done kotet yes you finished both don't you we, we shamed him into yes. it <laughs> <laughs> okay. i feel like well, i feel like we questions... dragged him through it kicking and screaming i get that but some of the questions you were saying actually kind of get answered at the end of, of, of Kotet. In, th those are individuals. I'm talking larger story elements. The fact that, you know, I, wa I want to see an actual empire and republic that actually stand for something that okay. actually, you know, quite right, frankly, the that. entire alliance that supersedes everything was the dumbest storytelling right. move that they could but have I'm ever made. So I want to see that completely. Eliminated. And all that stuff that, Kind of yes, got, no, like, I know. Resolved. Okay, fine. That it kind <laughs> of got resolved until they decide that the immortal emperor is still alive and decides to possess you again. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> you know, or he's just been hiding in the back of your mind where nobody noticed him, and now he's gonna wake <laughs> up again. Oh, okay? yeah. Oh, oh, I remember you. Just comes out of the shadows <laughs> one day. But hey. yes, I did watch. I did watch the cinematic cutscenes because I didn't actually get to play any of that concluding content. But sure, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That was awesome incredibly infuriating i'd like to see storytelling go back to an environment in which the decisions that i make get played out by me in my video game in a game <laughs> environment rather than just a cutscene that i can sit and watch while the children of you know these the, the emperor do things to him and resolve the issues for me <laughs> right no i think you definitely raise a good point i i think i, I would piggyback on redna what you said about my character is not the most important character in the galaxy. I think once you get to the end of Kotfi and Kotet, your character is the the Outlander, the Alliance commander. That's like as, as Luke Skywalker as you can get. I'm a legend. I don't want to be a legend. I just want to be a you smuggler. To <laughs> you know? Even if you choose yeah. not to, it's still you determining who does. Right. And, I mean, it, what happens with that. And quite frankly, that's I, I don't want to be a galactic dominatrix you know it's like I, I i'm supposed to be a smuggler i want to be going under the radar i don't want the authorities noticing me right i don't want to be the authorities you know yeah and, and so, I, so I everybody needs to go back to normal <laughs> they could actually be told that are are in that vein right. like okay i get it of course there are going to be like i could even see a trooper that decides through his storytelling elements that he really does want to like his uh, decision making and faculty processes are better than those stupid politicians so he does want to take over that chair or obviously the sith have always been power hungry and want to rule the galaxy so th those story elements le lend towards that but there's a lot more in this game that i'd like to see um restored just just opportunities for storytelling mm. to be restored not to mention the simple fact that i do remember what was it it was uh with the conclusion of um the dread palace dread fortress and, and the dread guard themselves a lot of people were really hopeful pre uh, Revan 
um, for that the next expansion was actually going to be less mystical. Like we we had gotten so far down, and granted, I do think they actually took a step back and actually restored. I really like the Shadow of Revan storytelling elements for that matter because they did they weren't all driven by overpowered force users, you know. Uh, and it wasn't deep mysticism. It was more about the the factions themselves and and the orchestrations of people that might not be force sensitive but could still influence some events. Um, and I I like that that kind of storytelling. So I'd like I think in the next that's the easiest answer is in the next expansion. What I'd like to see is some storytelling that isn't uh, so hyped up on the super crack of the magic, you know, and and maybe right. some. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's that's great. Let's kind of get back to basics is what I'm hearing out of what you're saying. Like, let's get back to the two factions. Let's get back to where you're a player in amongst those factions, but not necessarily the leader of one of those factions. Or, you know, like a, like, a, like the outcome of the galaxy is determined essentially by you. It should be what it is. And you're just in that tapestry. It's kind of, kind of the thought uh, there, I suppose. Elise, have you, uh, what would you like to see in 6.0? Um, so, uh, what did I play? So the character that I've taken all the way through the story is my bounty hunter. Just not because I love my bounty hunter, but because it's a Torian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. so, so, I mean, full disclosure... Um, really, my favorite class is um, the Assassin Shadow one, right? Okay. But I do really, I, I kind of feel what Redna is saying, but f somewhat because of a different one. I really liked the fact that you were unusual being a Jedi, right? The majority of the people were not supposed to be Jedi, right? Magic was supposed to be more, less common. So... You know, when you showed up, it was oh, there's a Jedi here. At least towards the beginning of the, of the, um, Republic storylines, I got more yeah. of that. This I is thought. Jedi business. Go back to your drinks, kind of a thing. Right. 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 I, I kind of liked that. So, um, I would love for them to go back to that more. You know, where you kind of felt, I don't know, your class was important. So I, I, I get what. Um, what Redna is saying. Um, I, though, like that kind of force and balance kind of a thing that Kotet's, right, made us kind of go through with Satil and Mar. Okay, uh-huh. Yeah, that wasn't in Eternal Throne. Kotet, was Kotet okay. yes. <laughs> yes. I can't remember. Sure. Um, because really, honestly, like, Jolie Bindo was, like, my favorite character in... Um, Kotor? Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that kind of balance, like the things in balance. So I kind of like that. Um, and really, you kind of get punished right now for being in the middle. Great. Yeah, so right. Um, so I kind of like that. I really would like them to kind of keep going with that a little bit. If it's not us going on some pilgrimage to try and figure out, if you're talking like a Jedi or Sith or whatever, you know, where we're supposed to be or whatever. That would be one thing. I would like that. Um, the other thing that I like too, um, and I know they kind of touch on it, I think in Kotet, about like what happened while we were stuck in Carbonite for five years. But it was really diffuse for me. Like how the different planets were ravaged and what happened while we were done and how people were suffering. And then they touched again on kind of how we were responsible for some of it in the i think the three flashpoints right mm -hmm. we get some of that i would like them to go a little further with that i i would like it like mass effect more where we actually get to either have people talk to us about it or you actually like like hear people talking about it like i it just was too diffuse for me i would really like to kind of see them present how the actual universe is right now Right. You know, when we come into it, so we can actually get an idea of where we are in space. Because you history. you like want them to a build state of the galaxy refresh, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you didn't really feel they did that did strongly enough in Coffee? No. Huh? Interesting. No, because I was too busy trying to get to the end of the story. Like, I, oh, you space I wanted to see it. No, <laughs> I didn't. Actually, I am joking. But 
<laughs> I mean, I'm one of those who reads a book usually twice. I okay. like speed through first the first time, and my what I want is what how's it end? How does it end? I'm not paying attention to the subtleties and the details. Then I'll go back and read it. I do it with my video games too. I'll play it real fast through, and I ignore all the side quests. And then I'll go back and pull it, play it all the way through, paying attention to that stuff. Okay, just, getting into the weeds. Right. I just didn't enjoy the two expansions enough to do that. So I no, I didn't. I I, I couldn't tell you right now if you asked me specific questions about planets or people or factions, except for my like companions that I cared about mm. <laughs> that were part of the main quest lines. Torian. Um I, I just didn't pay attention because it was just way too diverse, uh, diffuse. I would like them to bring that back. I did almost no of of the extra alerts. I think I did ten and that was it. Okay, yeah, picking up the yeah. yeah, well, but, that to I, me is... Yeah, like, I did everything up until Chapter 9 of Coffee. Everything, you know? And all of the different, you know, identical flashpoints that had different location names. Um, and and then, since then, I'm, I'm the same way. I basically played through... Star Fortresses, once. I think you meant, Redna. Yeah. I, yeah, Star Fortresses. Thank mm -hmm. you, that's what they're called, the Star Fortresses. Yeah. And, and, and for me, it was a little bit of a different reason, is honestly as I went through and anybody that watched on my stream, as I was going through and reacting to it, so much of it just didn't make any sense at all for where my character was coming from that I was just eternally frustrated, like maddeningly frustrated. And I couldn't, I got myself stuck on, on so much of the nuance of just this, of either the abject absurdity or the complete conflict or the contradiction to what had come before that I just I didn't enjoy it. I didn't want to return to it and and go back and see the side stuff that I'd missed because if if the main story was that infuriating, I knew I was just going to get even more aggravated <laughs> going after anything else. For me it was more I have like this internal like okay, if I do one the same thing one more time, I will hate the game. <laughs> so I have this kind of like internal like no, I'm not going one step further down this path because I don't want to just completely rage quit this game. So I, after the 10th a companion alert for all of these, and then I think I did three of the star fortresses, maybe I was like, okay, this is like the same thing. And I'm an explorer type. So uh -huh. which car you are too doing the same thing over and over again, just does not light my fire and encourage me to, keep playing stuff. i was so i kind of went into I achievement like, mode on that i mean like i was like ooh, veroa dens let's get her okay now let's get that Dr drucus guy or whatever rocus let's get him but well, i mean that's the thing with all of those getting all of those guys unlocked is that the, the you're rushing through the journey to get the guy and then once you got the companion you're like oh right you never use them <laughs> See, remember <laughs> okay. my Next achievement gene is broken Okay. So, right. 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 <laughs> so I didn't have that to fall back on. So I was. Oh like, yeah, that that's yeah, another no, story thing I on. totally want is I want a story that kills off literally every one of these unnecessary <laughs> tangential companions. Like, give so, me the companions that I spent years building relationships with. So, Randa, you're funny because you're like, I don't want to have any. I don't want to have to romance, or I don't want to have anything to do with a guy who wants to kill everybody. <laughs> Except I want to kill all my companions. <laughs> I just think that's comical. Well, no, just the <laughs> circumstances in which they go and, you know, die honorably, protecting me somehow or something. I don't know. But Call them. What if they get just rid, ride off into the sunset and you don't Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't mind that either. I like, mean, you'd be okay with that too, right? Permanently, where it dismisses and is no longer listed in my companion window. Yeah, yeah fair like, enough. Yeah. Have a great day here. Uh, yeah. I, I'll give you this... Uh, bonus and sorry terminating we don't need you for the job anymore bye, -bye. i do want to say though that i did do the severance Blizz, package uh, uh companion thing because i thought it was very cute yes this is great Everyone I, like loves Blizz. Him. I thought it was very cute so i did that one right the first like few actually weren't bad i mean you had to go and like kill world bosses for kaizen or whatever i mean that makes sense for his character um, yeah. Score juggernaut points. Yes. Correct. I, I, I kind of liked those, but as they kept going, it just kind of felt like. You're just collecting more and there's more. There's another one. Yeah. 
Add it to so the yeah, and that was honestly, I think I was more <laughs> irritated enough. by the fact that I had to go and pick up everyone else's companions on my character, <laughs> right? Like the new ones were fine. They don't even speak basic, so I don't understand anything they're saying anyway. And they can, you know, put them in there. That's fine because now I can use more people for crafting. Cool. Yeah. But like the fact that I had, you know, as a gunslinger to go pick up a Sith Inquisitor companion, like, no oh, thanks. Not interested. Heck, I didn't even want Kaizen on anybody but my shadow. You know, my trooper doesn't need Kaizen. Right, yeah. So there's two things that I would like to see um, in answer to this question. Uh, the first one, and I see somebody has said here. Who is it? Suhei, I hope that I got your name right. Uh, we need to build the academies and, uh, and the councils. I, I would like to see a reestablishment definitely of... But the the factions right the the empire and and the, the academies are a good place to start because everything that's where the up and comers come from so i agree with that i just like it to be a, a, make it new somehow right this is the, the the new sith academy the new jedi academy like like this is years and years later i don't it shouldn't be tython again there should be like and you can only well, access fair. it at this point in the storyline maybe Here's a great way that you could even incorporate it because we've had several significant events occur around that very premise so far. So it would be totally appropriate to do something, you know, to further that. First, yes, we started the game with the destruction of the Jedi Temple by the Empire on Coruscant, which is why we had to start on Tython, right? Yes. We went to these ancient. So, so go back, go back to Coruscant. Jedi. That would be cool. Reestablish right, the exactly. Jedi so Academy on Coruscant. Kind of restoration of the Jedi on Coruscant, I think, would be great in fact they could even make that be you know tie it into the prequels like have some of the buildings be the ones that we end up being in a couple thousand generations from now you know um that were used in the movies that yeah, would the be council totally room like yeah and this is why it didn't match before is because it got destroyed and, that, and then we were on tython for a while and meanwhile they rebuilt and now we can go up into the council spire you know like yeah. that would be really cool on coruscant That's yeah cool. and maybe like the, take the sith academy put it in space you know, it's like say, some I, kind I don't of a. I want them to put it back on Korriban. I yeah. really don't. I want them to put it somewhere else. If you can't have it on Tython for the Jedi, put it on Nathema. You know, I mean, they, there's got to be some good force something on Nathema, right? Put it there. Uh, could, or Yavin actually. Four, and, move and it to you, uh, Yavin Four. <laughs> like, hey, listen, we finally overthrown this emperor, but he did have some knowledge that we would like to learn from. We are going to put our training academies here because that's how freaking. Uh, uh, Valen was trained and she was obviously pretty hardcore and there were you know some of those sure. mystic em emperor loved him type beings that cared for his kids and so like yeah you could totally script something in there that there's a good cause now that the force has been restored to Nathma this is where the Sith Academy should be because it's still a twisted zone of anger death and destruction and the dark side just sure. holds sway you know that kind of thing right plus it'd be cuter and Korriban. <laughs> I never liked Korriban. It was just dirt. Red. It's dirt. sand. It's it gets coarse and it gets everywhere. What's I'm Sorry. probably butchering the quote, but hey. And spoiler, if you haven't played the new Zios is a good doves. It's like all like not dirt anymore. No. Right, <laughs> right. Life has finally been restored to it. Well, it's escaped, and and the force has also been restored because that was the thing. The original foundational principle of the planet is that the force was utterly stripped from it which sure. is why no life could survive because life creates the force right yeah but now with the demise of the emperor supposedly the, the force is returning but i like Su suhei's alternate option too which is zyost for the same reason right and i actually really did like zyost that concluding chapter it's a very imperial started. planet it's just great i mean right. that was a good one though i really did enjoy playing that Mm -hmm. Rebuilding Zyost. Yeah, like you could, and, and the easy way that they could do that is they could keep that as that story element as you're going through the leveling experience and the storytelling, but then they could actually provide us with a permanent world. We have Belsavis, right? But then we also have a separate world that is Section X for a daily area. So in an expansion, they could actually just give us a planet that is Zyost. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the second thing that I would like to see is, a, is the, the bad guy, whoever the bad guy is. And this is assuming they're going to drive us all through one story. Redna, I like your idea more where everybody gets flesh it out a bit. You know, let people that are unimportant in the galaxy be unimportant in the galaxy. But they still have a, a, a meaningful storyline. But as far as the, the whoever's leading these, these different factions, the bad guy of them, um, I would like it to be a, a different direction 
to Valkorian. So you have been Valkorian, this master force user. You know, he is he's more military, I'd say, than Palpatine. You know, like 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 he's definitely got a more presence, more of a he's he's you know, he's a more of a warrior. You can see that in him in Valkorian versus Palpatine. I'd want it to go with a different direction because we we know those two archetypes very well at this point. Maybe have have it be more of like a a throne. You know, like where you've got a military mind who is running the show, who is is brilliant. You know, for instance, have that be the bad guy for a change. That be the uh, the antagonist. So I'd like to see something fresh and new with with especially in the galactic government as 6.0 emerges. What uh, you know, make bring some complexity so, so what to you're this. Saying is you want Darth Malgus? That's well, maybe not. I don't know if I don't know if Malgus ever or something did. Something similar. I don't know I, if he ever kinda, did prove himself hear... as a as a military genius he, he was a, he well, was definitely okay, so a wannabe not quite to that level but he was a sith that was military and strategic he was also somebody that was willing to embrace non-humans and kind of move away from the xenophobia he, he wanted to build a new order to see uh yeah he malgus would be perfect i think order. as I gotta, a go ahead i gotta agree was... with i gotta agree with uh, sakari i kind of would like it to not be a sith how about we have a regular rank and file who decides that he's done? Well, then you have to discuss what about to what the empire is, because by precisely the empire bring it, is an bring extension. It back. Precisely, of what happens bring if what happens if they outlaw the Sith? So, they say, so you know what, what? Saying, we, we want a stable no empire. empire. You guys are ruining the empire, and somehow they outlaw the Sith in the empire, and then what you have no. is like a military cool. dictatorship, and there's still Sith there, but they're underground kind of a thing. What about that angle? So, so let me let me let me try to move us on to the deliberation but, segment okay, here. To pull that off, you and and you could actually, and that would be really cool. <laughs> but to pull that off, what you would need to do is some sort of event where that would be the first expansion. Would be the event that drives the Sith themselves down out of the Empire, right? That cool. it could actually yeah. be, and could even you know orchestrate events such. That there are operations that conclude with that, right? That the the, the council themselves end up getting overthrown. <laughs> Order sixty seven. All the poli political elite in the <laughs> Sith orchestrations, but that would be really tricky. But then again, that would actually be a story I'd be really interested in. Seeing. Technically, this would be Order sixty five. Just just making sure we right. got the numbers right. right. <laughs> I got to credit Neff though. That's his joke. Palpatine's inspiration. For <laughs> <laughs> so so okay. So yeah, the, the discussion. Intriguing. The discussion that we're having tonight is over the factions and their identities. Um, so everybody knows when you start as, let's take the, just the Jedi and the Sith for a second. You start a Jedi, you start on Tython, you know what you're getting involved in, right? You know who the Republic is. You know what they espouse to be. You know what their values are. They're for freedom, right? They're for equality. They're for bringing, um, they, they embrace aliens, you know. And there's, there's it's not all clean. Right, you get to Coruscant, you realize in a hurry that there's there's gangs and the Justicars, you know, and you got you run into Suresh and her her dealings. So, but but you Can know, I vote for Suresh being the bad girl on. Um... She's dead. <laughs> I mean, you can raise her from the dead if you want, but I I know I killed her. <laughs> I didn't kill her. I just punched her. Oh, you sent her to jail. <laughs> you were much nicer to her than I was. But, she would have been great, though. She was awesome as a bad girl. I'm sorry. I think she should have gotten worse. She I actually bad. agree. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what the general public's opinion of her was, but I agree with you. I, her um, descent into, like, basically trying to take the shortcuts to do what was necessary to try to save the Republic, I thought was actually very convincing of a politician going very wrong. Right. And I, and I really enjoyed uh, her... Especially since she started out as the governor of Terrace, yeah, you know? trying to restore the place, absolutely, right, right, and, and she was she was the one that brought life back onto the planet and everything, you know, and 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 dealing with that. But then you can see also having to deal with the rat ghouls that she picked up some uh, pretty aggressive uh, <laughs> policy making principles. She picked up uh, something. But yeah, I she really really did to like make her character. The hard decisions basically was her attitude. Yes, and when you yeah. and when you yeah, have that kind of person. The, that anti-hero, she was totally one. We don't see him very often in this game. Yes, and that's that's what I love about her is that she is so she's in the midst of this. Oh, you know, the goody-goody republic, 
you know, and yeah, all of and what they she, stand she, for, and she's corrupting it's the not thing. That I like her. I very much like that her character exists because I like to hate her. <laughs> right. No, that's that's perfectly legit. I, I think. enjoyed punching her. So, so then, so you you have the Republic on one hand. On the other hand, you have the the Sith and the Empire, and everybody knows they're about galactic domination. They're about in, you know enslaving people. They're about. I'm not going to unpack that too much. So that I don't trigger Redna, <laughs> but you, you have you have what I argue is two very clearly defined factions and their identities. You know who the Republic is, and you know who the who the uh, Empire is, and what they believe and what they're trying to accomplish. There are heroes and anti-heroes that rise up in the midst of that that either go against that set of values, i.e., Suresh on the Republic side, or that champion those values. And I think I think Malgus as a visionary in, in a way is kind of taking it in a new direction. And then you have people that embody those values, like like what's his name, Thanaton, is that the guy's name, the the bad guy in the uh, um, sorcerer, the the Sith Inquisitor story. I think it's Thanaton, but he's like he's like tradition. You know, you get guys that take it and run with it. Well, um, okay, I, so here, go ahead. I, I have to say though, I don't feel that the Empire. But they did a good job, though, of so uh, of of reflecting both sides. Because even the Empire has light and dark sides. You kind of get that in Shadow of Revan, if you ask my honest opinion. With um, I'm having a senior moment, but Lana. Um, but I, I really didn't feel like you got like the empire soldiers kind of perspective in the any of the empire storylines you get it kind of in the agents one but not really i i think they need to do a better job with that like a like a trooper version in the empire yeah i mean that kind of rank and file kind of i'm here to fight for my home maybe i don't agree with my leaders and i'm not here to kill everything and i don't want to take slaves or whatever i'm just Rank here right to to fight for my home you don't ever really get that like the, the stormtrooper you know I mean? perspective you know where you yeah, you've trained at the yeah. academy in karida yeah. and then you you know your your brother yeah. something or other there's a complication in your your yeah. history somewhere you yeah. now you're a pilot or something on you know or whatever right you know. gotcha. right i mean kind so, of the kind of the battlefront what's her faces story even though they kind of went a little lame with that at the end but you know they did that in battlefront 2 uh eden verso or whatever her kind of story she wasn't out there to murder right. everything she was there to fight for she her thought home. she was actually fighting for the good guys yeah absolutely. Right. and you know and i'm here we want to instill order you know we think that everybody will be happy like they, you kind of touch on that but it always gets like overwhelmed with the sith stuff right and um i i would like them to spend a little bit more time on an average you know what do average empire people soldiers government people whatever right so the new playable class we want to have is a slave <laughs> <laughs> right. that's a terrible like joke a i'm so sorry it would be interesting uh, they maybe. already have the inquisitor story <laughs> yeah you know you start as a slave dang it you're right yeah. there's a slave exactly oh goodness they talk about it the whole way through but like you get the agent story but to me the agent one kind of gets like mixed up with kind of the double it becomes like, yeah but it like, becomes like military lines, which is cool but it's not the same as like the flip side of the trooper story the trooper story i thought kind of sort of gave you all those points right no you're right it's so if i can try and rephrase a little bit i think what you're looking for is something where because there's supposed to be some sort of ideological motivation that is at the base, the foundation of the empire, such as, and you know, people speculate about this in Star Wars community all the time, right? But essentially, the premise of the empire to be functional, I think, ought to be essentially organized, strict, you know. Uh, everything, you know, excessive law is a centralized state, but it's for the betterment and security and safety of the general populace, right? Yes. Like, I'm going out to protect my no, well, my home country, and I've joined the military because I want to be an extension of enforcing the peace, you know, uh, to a certain extent. So it's a right? police now, state, essentially. Right, to, to okay. a certain extent. It is. It's a, it's a police state. Or it's, 
Right. It's, it's tyrannical. It's dictatorial. Dictatorial. But you know the 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 fallacy that a lot of people like to propagate in a tyrannical state is that a benevolent leader can still create an environment which is good for the people. Right. Okay, fine. It might be absolute control, but because he's got, he really is making the best interests of others. So long as you're on his side, work. right? As so long as you're, sub- you vote for him when, it, when it's the elections, you're cool. Right. Well, no, no, because, <laughs> because that, that's not a dictatorship, right? Uh, there's, you don't oh, need an election they have in a, that case. They have elections. You just, um, you just vote for the leader. <laughs> the well, supreme leader. And, and that's the thing, too, because as an extension of that, and because I'm sitting here thinking as you discuss this, at least, and, and it's something I've always wanted to see explored in Star Wars generally, not even just our video game or the movies. It's something, because even in the EU, they never really got there. They tried a few times. But the one thing I've always wanted, right, is like at the basic, most basic level, just to give a, a, a foundational understanding so that people can understand where I'm coming from. This is entirely my Star Wars, right? Hashtag my Star Wars. But I've always felt that the premise is that the difference between the Jedi and the Sith at its most base stance is that the Sith are trying to use the Force towards their own goals, right? They want to control it and then therefore use the powers that they can get from it. And they're using emotional power to drive that desire as opposed to the jedi which are aspire to you know how successful they are we can discuss that but the base of the jedi is essentially that they subsume themselves to the will of the force right that they are trying to passively allow themselves to follow what they feel the force is right. telling them is i think what's or, best. Redna, i think i think i have a, dico- a dichotomy for you in this it's selfless versus selfish i think right. is the exactly. difference Exactly. You know, if you're selfless, you're serving everyone else. You're a tool but, of the force. But if you're selfish, the force is yours extent. to use and you're trying to control everyone else. But only to a certain extent, right? Because then there's also the fact that, okay, so the Jedi are trying to, therefore, and a lot of people like, you know, the meme of the fact that they've been neutered because they have no emotions. They're suppressing their emotions, you know? And they're trying to uh, basically master themselves so that they can have the force uh, most powerfully channeled through them as opposed to the... The Sith are using their emotions to power their abilities in the Force, right? Okay, but that doesn't inherently require one or the other to be good or evil, right? True. You can see how that would lend itself, like Je- like Yoda had said, you know, the uh, rage leads to this, to that, to that, to that, which leads to the dark side, and forever will it dominate your history. Yes, because that's most likely going to be the outcome. But that doesn't necessarily dictate that it must be. And we did see at the end of some of these recent expansions, even in Kotfi and Kotet, we saw Mar, quite frankly, projecting himself as a light side force ghost. You know, hey, we had... Be nice to Mar. I loved him. And no, I know, but... <laughs> but and you wouldn't expect guy. that. Mar, Mar was Both military... Malchus and Mar. Yeah. They were not particularly hot-headed, uh, fiery, emotional personalities. They were actually more controlled, more subdued, especially Mar. Mar was very calculating, very, you know. And and so we have already okay. seen the empire shifting in that direction where maybe he's controlling his emotions and channeling all of his rage and, and those emotions, but he's got that, that emotional control so that he doesn't necessarily inherently have to be evil, where we could actually move to an empire that doesn't have to be racist and bigoted and everything else, right? But they've still got this Sith agenda or whatever, but maybe they actually aren't also purely motivated by, you know, like, like I don't feel Negative like emotion. this requires that you have to want to be individually in power of the galaxy. Right. That you instead embrace these Sith principles of using your emotions to use the Force, but that you actually still can aspire or have some motivations that are inherently good. You might end up doing bad as a result, but you could have that storytelling involved, right? And then you could even explore on the other side of that, the Jedi's propensity for being neutered emotionally could lead to some pretty devastating bad outcomes because they refuse to, like, basic principles of love and altruism because those are too emotional, you know? I want to say that's what happened, actually, with Anakin. You look at Anakin Skywalker's storyline... All he wanted was to save the people he loved. And look how, look how through the empire, emperor's twisting, for instance, and through the events that he couldn't control, there was, there's a lot of uh, circumstances that complicated it. But actually, in, in the deepest root of who he was as a person, he, he was wanting to accomplish something good. You know? and, but but uh, because it was, he, he wasn't allowed to acknowledge it, and there was a lot of complications that 
ended up allowing well, Palpatine snap. to manipulate that. Yeah, and then this, yeah, this the death of his wife certainly that would cause a lot of people, particularly with that much power at sure. their disposal. But what you so have, much- what you have, is someone pursuing the, uh, an objective that is actually actually a good objective but because of all of the complications and because they really don't have that kind of control ends up falling to the dark side are you it's, it's a it's a great story i think in that in and how the sometimes the best intentions you can have can actually be a road to hell in a sense and, you know and anakin actually starts that whole we're going to start the empire you know so that we have a strong leader and make everybody happy or I can't remember exactly what he says, right. but if you remember, that's what he starts talking to Padme right. about and you why can he's that he, in our he's new empire. That yeah. guy by not making himself the emperor. He says, "Hey, I'll have my buddy Palpatine do it," you know, because he's such you know, it's not a power grab, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, we're gonna do something good. We're gonna help everybody. We're gonna bring order to the universe and make everybody happier basically with, with the irony being that it's actually the original a new hope leia's line to grand moff tarkin very much describes the flaw of that very philosophy which is you know the the tighter your grasp the more others will slip through your fingers you know right. like you can't force people to be good you sure. can't force them to be happy you can only create an environment where people hopefully make those choice the choices that lead to that right but you and as soon as you start forcing anybody and take their freedoms from them, there it's you know right. that's so misery. so okay. So we do have six point coming out. What's happened is that we're at the end of the Eternal Throne storyline. There's a third party that's coming, namely the Eternal Empire, that has wiped the floor with the existing Empire and with the existing Republic. They're very subdued. They've been paying taxes galore. Um, so maybe let's shift a moment now and talk about where we are now, pre-6.0. What does the Republic look like right now? What does the Empire look like right now? And what would we like to see happen maybe? What, development, what developments need to happen in the Republic and in the Empire to set them up to be factions that are at least can hold each other, can hold their own against each other? Does my question make sense? So, for instance, if if yes. yeah, but can that you, was if, my that's can, my question. Two of you, because you guys have played okay, the Black so, so, stories as well. So let me get. So tell me, where are we? So we are. So, like I said, everything's Zyast, completely or not Zyast, uh, but what you call it? Um, um, what's what's our new new planet? I'm, I'm o- having Odessan, the one we're living on now. No, um, the Eternal Empire's home planet. I'm having Zakul. like a. Thank you. I knew it was a Z. I just couldn't remember. <laughs> Zalbar, just, just name yeah, it after the I Wookie. I mean, Zakul is mad <laughs> because we took away their happy person, their person that made their lives nice and happy, and now they're okay. Mess. So they're mad at us. That's actually a good point to bring up. We actually did. there are complications <laughs> still <laughs> still afoot. Yep. Yeah, that's where so, the whole so, Nathema conspiracy comes from. So that what, what I feel like has always happened, especially with the Republic, more so than the Empire, but now they're kind of both in the same boat, is weakness. You can't really have countries at war with each other. Let's just t- talk about countries, for instance. In knowing from our own, own Earth history, right? You can't have countries at war with each other when they don't have strong economies. If you want to steamroll someone else, the first thing you do is work on your economy. Right, and uh, in games we do this all the time. Take StarCraft, for instance. You got to build your economy before you can actually really raise an army. Essentially, that's kind of what I want to see happen with with both of these. I think there needs to be a pex. T- there needs to be a time of rest somewhere in the midst here. Maybe we need to skip down the road a little bit. Okay, this is now twenty years later or something. But there's been a time when both can rebuild, both can rebuild their economies. There's an establishment of new governments. I feel like we need to kick the can down the road a bit so that they can get back on their feet. Because it takes a long time when you've been oppressed, like they have with the Eternal Empire, to to get to where you can actually fight with someone else. And I feel like the Republic it, it has always been a, kind of their back against the ropes. They've always, you know, they lost the fight on, on McKeb, for instance, for the Isotope 6, I think it is, right? The Empire is actually the ones that won that. And so... They, they're the ones that actually got the resource out of the, the center of the planet to actually create the drives and, and whatever that they needed to make the ships decent. 
Um, so I feel like the Republic kind of needs a break. Give, give them some chance to establish themselves because they've always been weak. And I, I don't know if I'm talking just to nobody here, <laughs> if nobody agrees with me. But I mean, I, I think there needs to be something. I didn't finish McCab because I hated McCab. So I'm going to take your word for that. Yeah. I mean, if you've played at both sides, the, Re the Republic is there overtly. The uh, Empire is there covertly. Um, the, the Republic is just trying to get everyone off the planet, save as many people as we can. Um, and meanwhile, the, the Empire is trying to stabilize the planet and succeeds in doing so. And the Republic's gone with everybody. At the end of it, the Republic has left with everybody and the Empire is, is who is remaining and has, and has the planet and can mine the resource. So, so what is the Asina Malcolm issue from Iocath? So Asina... Oh, yeah. The Asina M Malcolm... Yeah, well, we're the talking, chat room is saying that this Asina slash Malcolm issue well, we're talking about Mel needs to be resolved before 6.0. Oh, no, 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 Malcolm, so, what's his name? Uh, uh, just, uh, Theron's dad. So, Theron's so, dad, yeah. Jeez. So, I don't, so I've not played this from the, the Republic perspective, where you get to, I don't know if you get to kill Asina, but I do know you can kill Jace Malcolm. So I, I want to say that I, my theory is that that's probably resolved in that, in that encounter. You pick a direction... And the other one you kind of wipe out. Mm -hmm. but I've, You have to pick who you're going to side with. So if you go Empire side, you either side with Asina and let her help you, or you side with Malcolm. Can anyone answer for me from chat? I don't know if we can answer it ourselves, but do, do you get to kill Asina if you go to the, uh, to the light side slash a Republic? Starry Saber says one, one survives, the other doesn't, depending on what story choice you make. Okay, so you can kill Asina. Very interesting. All right, so that's gonna that's gonna that in my opinion that kind of herds you into a down onto a story on rails, which I don't like. I want them to set up the the conflict, and you're in amidst that conflict. Is what I well, would. Well, then like you to had see. to pick at the end of Kotbi, or no, I'm sorry, at the end of Nathema, you have to again pick what side you're gonna align yourself with. But right. my question again is how determinate is that i mean like how yeah I, i'll be perfectly honest it baffles story, me at all that you've had to make these decisions right because, I mean, like, because they did the empire and the republic don't exist so who gives a rat <laughs> well, well i mean it's ooh, i'm gonna to... i'm gonna defend the dead republic no i'm gonna defend the dead empire like <laughs> this well, Political it's body just, that has been completely irrelevant for 15 years. Oh, wait. No, let's let's disband let's this band the closest thing to government that we've had for I don't know well, how the long. The alliance is the only thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the only thing that I can think of is that when you're making that choice, we've now pissed off the other side that we didn't choose. Right. That's how it felt when I was making that choice. And so now I assume that they will be the enemy. Right. Now, when we started the game, right, if you made a, a Republic or, a, or an Empire character, the other side was automatically your enemy, right? Right. But now you could be a bounty yeah. hunter was, and so chose to align yourself with the Republic. You could have done that. Yeah, that's essentially your, or, your opportunity to faction switch. Correct. You could faction. Which, quite frankly, the best. How are they going to do that? Like, yeah, I don't biggest, understand how they're going to do that. The best thing that they could do with this expansion is to actually make that choice matter. So that with 6.0, by the way, you have just faction swapped, right? Your character imports over. Because now that, especially now that PvP is cross-faction for everything, right? Then it doesn't matter what your base class is. So you could actually have, if you made that choice matter, so that you logged in day after 6.0 log launch. And you're on the pub fleet. What? You're a <laughs> bounty hunter. That'd be great. You're on the pub fleet. Or how about, a, how about an my Empire Smuggler? My, Could my you agent imagine that? That would be cool. Like Imperial Smuggler. Right. Empire Smuggler. But I don't know how they're going to do that. I don't want to get into the uh, yeah, blocks because I know that's not what we're trying to do. But I just don't see because of how slanted it is seems like people seem to make characters like it seems there's more empire characters than republic or right. whatever the, yeah how are they gonna do that i just i just don't but we won't go into that we're trying to think not <laughs> we're trying to broaden here <laughs>
Yeah, I'm not kidding. Without trying to like throw Listen, uh, robots. It's not my job right. to write the story. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know. So I just, I, it I is just worth mentioning, that. like Chet mentioned, that Darth Valron is the one who takes place after, who takes control of the Empire after Asina is taken out. Oh yeah. Valron is is the Sith yeah. pure blood. He's kind of like a. He's kind of like a. I don't necessarily see him being a powerful. He's more of a placeholder controller, I think, than... In fact, for the most part, I didn't find Asina to be that compelling as a... Oh, I liked her. She, well, as an empress, maybe. I don't know, like, but... but I can see, I can see a, a more powerful Sith rising up and just knocking her over. You know, think of Melgus well, coming back. Honest, he would I just... don't think that there should be an emperor or an empress. Like, the emperor himself was something that stood apart from the entire hierarchy anyway, because he was immortal, right? Sure. And then it was really the council that dictated day to day terms to the government. Right. So realistically, there shouldn't. I don't think. Or well, what if? Be, what if you have an empire? A council, but they don't need an emperor. What well, if you have an empire? Ron was a paper pusher. So yeah. I just don't see him being. He's more of a bureaucrat. Compelling. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just, I just think that I can see maybe two or three factions in the empire, and that's what the empire is. Is that like? There's maybe two or three leaders, and they're they're all, all aligned behind them, and they're all kind of warring for dominance, and that's kind of where you are. That I mean, that's a nice. You can come up with some decent story in that. I think. I just I don't know. You know, what else coming coming out of that kind of idea string that you're going for there. Wouldn't it be interesting if instead of having <laughs> conquest being separate from the story? That in your thing to re like bring bring order to the to the universe as after all of this war and stuff and you know the alliance falling apart that like your planetary conquest actually fed into this storyline like you have to like fix each planet and as you do that like it do you know what I'm saying mm. like if you're talking about trying to like like fix all the destruction that came from the eternal empire and then the alliance fighting and all that so, stuff. so faction goals basically kind of i mean like okay. you're trying to bring everything back to you know a sense of stability and, and as you go through these new areas the more you complete it or whatever then feeds into your you know right um, Kind of putting what, everything back yeah. into order. What usually happens after a war is that borders get redrawn, right? You have so right now you we know that Roman Kos is a you know, you have these planets, some of them are neutral like Voss, nobody could actually get a, a handle on it. But you have some planets that are very clearly one side or another. I'd like to see some of that kind of a thing. But maybe where where the borders have recently been withdrawn. So here you have a planet that is repl republic held now, but they're cleaning out some of where the, what the, what the empire or even what the eternal empire used you know cleaning out their culture, the, some of the debris that's left over from the destruction of in, uh, of the previous empires um uh, domination over that that area so i i mean i like this idea of rebuilding like like w but rebuilding to what i think is the question i think especially that matters more i think the republic has always known and kind of by nature of it being the republic what it's trying to accomplish every you know there's a senate everybody you know it makes law for the whole thing everybody's in they all protect each other i think the republic knows what it's trying to be uh, even though with despite the bad players i think the 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 empire has always had a um a, an identity crisis that's why later on you have darth bane who comes in as a mastermind he wants to remake it in his own in his own design you have melgus who rises up he wants to make it in his own design i think that the empire has always had that question what are we trying to build here and it's just whoever happens to be the strongest at the time they're the one who gets to, to dictate that so I think there's a lot in the midst of that that you it, rebuilding into what there there's a lot of story there I think that you can can definitely use. I think it's gonna be cool this uh, whole six point thing. And Suhei actually had one final way to sum it up, which would be pretty neat to see them pull it off. Is instead of going to the base classes, you just have four base storylines. The Jedi and the Sith are rebuilding their academies slash councils. And the non-Force users are doing rebuilding stabilization in their chosen faction. So for those planets. Hmm. And so it's basically actually even just two stories, but they're mirrored 
for those factions. And yes. I could see that, that working cool. out. And simple enough really to accomplish. Wanna see, yeah, exactly. I really would like them to do something then other than one. I really don't need to be the hero of my own story like sure. that. Right. <laughs> I would much rather like to see more, you know, what effect do I actually have on the universe and not how much of a... I want to take orders, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> how no. big of a deal can I make myself? I, I don't... Yeah, especially, I mean, for a smuggler, you just want to get back to how do I make money? Exactly. I don't care what the... what the. Actually, the, that's the whole thought about a smuggler, right? A smuggler exists despite the system and, in, yes. and, and, to, and to spite the system. They, they're underground. They've got nothing to do. And they don't care who's in charge. Well, as long as they can figure out some angle to make money in it, you know, and usually illegally, that they're good with that. <laughs> so and there, there needs to be some return, I think, but definitely back to the basics of this. We'll, we'll get it figured out. I hope. Any last thoughts before we move on to announcements, Redna? I know that's I like you a... guys. This is a fun night. Awesome. <laughs> that's good. Usually when I get crickets when I ask that question, that means we're done with the discussion. So <laughs> um, just to let everybody know, quick announcement. Uh, uh, 5.9.2a, boy, they like to take a lot onto these now, is going to deploy tomorrow. So the, the patch notes, the, there's some kind of tentative patch, patch notes, but the real actu actual live ones will be published tomorrow. So look for those. Uh, the thing's going to go live tomorrow. There's just some bug fixes, but one of the things that they are bringing back is going to be the line of sight thing that they were having trouble with um, for uh, decorations, decos in the Rishi stronghold. So uh, look for that tomorrow. We'll see how that happens. And hopefully they can deploy it and there won't be any uh, lag uh, slowdown issues that they were uh, having beforehand. So that's about it. All right. Well, I just wanted to say thank you Thank you. 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 I love the trolls in the chat room and on the Reddit threads. Thank you all for just engaging because good, bad, or ugly, thank you for being a part of the show. And that brings us to the end of the show. The council is adjourned. If you'd like to reach us, you can email us at the council at the council's com. Like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the council's photo. You can find Elise on Twitter at abrown35, Magic Ace at the Magic Ace, me at r3dn4, and Sakari at I am Sakari. Also, don't forget our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the council's photo, where patrons can catch the articles we're talking about behind the scenes and exclusive backstage access to our after show chat. That's it for this week, guys. May the force be bent to your will i don't know i don't have one tonight <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a good week <laughs> we'll see you next week the thank yous took it out of him i understand you are on this council but we do not grant you the rank of master what How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, master.